Coleman presenting about Lit Matter. Miss Wiley, can you hear me? Anything? Okay, well, so Miss Wiley, I told you you could hear me. So if you could open this on PowerPoint, that would be helpful. together by like students, uh, namely Liv and me and the Lit Mag crew, so we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But um, the emphasis of this PowerPoint is really to the underclassmen especially because we want people from all walks of being a like student to, to contribute, so especially underclassmen, it would be great if you guys really thought about contributing and even joining the LitMag staff. Next slide, please. Um, okay, so we're mainly active in the spring because that's when we start compiling work. And so what the rest of the semester looks like is we'll start gathering work and feel free to submit your work anytime between now and um, spring break. And then what will happen is every week we'll get a packet of submissions and we'll um, go through them and um, we choose what will be admitted into the um, lit mag and what won't be, and that's a process through um, anyone who comes to the meetings and reads the submissions. And then once we've um, read through all the submissions, we start layout week um, and we compile the final magazine, and that happens um, in May. Yeah. Sure, okay, next slide. Okay, so as I said, we really want more a more diverse group to submit this year because obviously the magazine is only as good as, as who submits to it which is really a crucial pillar of the lake mag so another important thing is that say you were to join the lit mag as a as a freshman or sophomore you could be playing a very large role in assembling the magazine by the time you were an upperclassman so I would really encourage Frosh and Soft, and I mean also juniors and seniors, but especially Frosh and Soft to, to think about participating in assembling the Lit Mag because it's really a lot of fun and it's, it really is a group, a group effort and you would get to read all the submissions, we read them anonymously, and then you would get to help decide what is in the magazine, what the cover is, exciting things like layout, so it's really a lot of fun and we really encourage people to not only submit but also to think about uh, participating in the LitMag as a staff member. Um, so what should you submit to LitMag? It's both visual and written work um, that you either create here on campus or it can be um, work that you create in your own free time, um, drawing, paintings, poems, short stories, anything. Um, yeah, so essays as well. Um, and they can be nonfiction or fiction. Um, and so either you can send them to Robin via email, or at some point there will be envelopes very clearly up on campus, like in places like the CAF and um, by, by the English rooms. 
Yeah, and really, like you, as Liv said, you can basically submit any written or visual work, and we, as I said, we read it without names, so it's not like you will be being judged for what you submit, so we really encourage you to submit any and all work that you have and are creating. Thank you. Thank you so much, Litvac team. Next up, we have Miss Greer talking about like film reading. Okay, we're gonna get started. I just had to assemble my crew. Okay. Um, so these fantastic film students from um, film cinematic storytelling from fall 2017 are gonna present about the film festival coming up and our uh, website that we just launched and our PPP project, which we're very, very proud of. We have about eight clients in the community, so I'll let them speak. We're gonna show you a few clips, and uh, we'll, uh, thank you very much for the time. And thanks to the uh, Center for Civic Engagement for um, really spearheading the PPP project here on campus. Thanks. So, um, Lynn Film Reading Film Fest is almost here. In addition to some amazing films from all genres, there will be food, student musicians, and a Q&A with the filmmakers. And it features film, films from film cinematic storytelling class and Bay Area Cinema students, as well as other Lick students. So um, please submit your films, email a link for download, and a title and description to Lydia Greer by Friday, January 26th. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be on February 2nd uh, from 6.30 to 9 p.m. in the theater. Uh, the schedule looks like at 6.30 there will be refreshments, 6 to 6.40 there will be entertainment, uh, at 7 the films will be shown, and at 8.30 there will be a Q&A. Okay, so for the PPP component of this class, every group or solo filmmaker um, partners with an organization in the community, and some people came into the class knowing which organization they wanted to work with, but a lot of us chose from a pool of organizations that actually like applied to work with us. Um, so we spent a day listening to pitches where people talk about the need in their organization, and then based on that need, um, filmmakers chose the organization that they wanted to work with and the type of video that they wanted to make. So some of those were just like general promotions for an organization or some people made spotlights on a specific project. Um, for example, my partner and I, we worked with the San Francisco Housing Rights Committee, um, which is an organization I wasn't familiar with before this, but they work with tenants and tenants' rights. And our video is about the Costa Hawkins bill, which is something that they're working to repeal right now. Um, so the project is really awesome because at the end of it you have like this tangible, professional looking product. Um, it's like something to show for your work, something that is going to be on websites or sent to other clients and you learn tons of skills like um, communication, uh, setting up meetings, problem solving, being responsible for like all your equipment. So definitely skills that translate outside of the class. Um, which is another reason why I thought the project was so interesting. Okay. Now we're going to show some clips from the PPP. Francisco is going through the roof. A lot of people are leaving San Francisco who have been residents for 20, 25, 30 years, moving to, you know, the outer cities. Traffic congestion is huge because they still have to get back to get their jobs, to attend to their jobs and what is required there. It is, it is an awful situation. Costa Hawkins prevents real rent control on all of our rental stock. Um, when it was passed by landlord lobbies in 1995, its purpose was to, to gut our rental protections. So anything built after 1995 um, or the year that cities passed rent control, which in San Francisco was 1979, it's not covered and landlords can jack the rents to whatever they want. Um. I used to live on Potrero Avenue in 23rd, which was like right next to um, 24th, and that street is just like super Latino, um, 
street is called Calle 24. Um, and so I used to live there for about um, for about five years or six years there. And then one time, the owner of the house told us that he wanted to rent the place, um, and he was going to bring the price up. It was even more than 75 percent of increase. Man, it was crazy. The amount he was asking for. And then after that, um, we said, you know what, we have to look for another place to move into because we cannot afford this right here. It's, going to be, it's not even worth that much money. San Francisco has the highest inequality out of any city in the United States. And California is the sixth largest economy in the world. So there's tons of money here. Um, there should be no reason that that money can't be distributed to help people get their basic needs met, including housing. If you're making uh, something like two or three thousand dollars a month in income, how in the world, with all your other expenses, are you going to be able to rent a one or two bedroom place? It's impossible because that. You go out on the market, you're gonna you're gonna be asked to, to spend at least three or four thousand dollars for a two bedroom. How in the world can you afford that? Uh, 
some interest from uh, the man who actually manages Matthew Levesque. He retired. He wrote a very good book. Uh, it's called well, <laughs> Revolutionary Landscape. And he uh, has some awesome ideas in it about uh, doing your garden, doing your landscaping. The building materials, that was actually the first thing uh, that started here. Uh, doors are, of course, you've seen that. That's, that's the thing that comes to mind. Uh, we also sell sash windows. And a lot of these uh, building materials, they're unique to San Francisco, and uh, people who remodel their houses and try to do, keep things within period, uh, they, they come here. The red shovel. much better in the theater. It's just that right now, because it's all quick and stuff. Uh, so here's a quick promo, just as a heads up, the audio is a little bit iffy, so just, yeah, there you go. Attention all Lit Warmerding students. Lit Filmmaking Lab is on February 2nd. If you... because apparently a lot of you don't know what we do, even though we are right there. Um, so, Youth Art Exchange is a program that hopes to sp spark a collaborative process between artists and students who are interested in possibly becoming artists as their career, but also just to give them an opportunity to try something that they may have never tried before. It is a completely free program. We recruit students from all over San Francisco, um, usually public high school students. Because we are housed here on your campus, we also have a couple of spots open in all of our programs for Lake Wilmerding High School students. So our current offerings this session are design build, printmaking, dance team, filmmaking, music production, and fashion design, as well as black and white photography. Our idea is that we have teaching artists who are also working professionals. So our architecture teachers are current architects. Our dance teacher is in a dance company. Our music production teacher is also a musician himself. Um, so they are all um, current working artists who want to share their craft with young people. I'm just going to highlight a couple of our programs. Um, the Design Build Program, which meets at John O'Connell High School on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4 to 6.30, um, is a program where we've done a lot of collaborative public projects. So the first one you see here is a dragon that currently lives outside of the Asian Art Museum. So our students took it from the design process. They did community forums to find out what people wanted on the project. So they, all these designs that they created were done in collaboration with the SF community. 
and then it was installed outside of the Asian Art Museum and it'll live there for about two years in their living innovation zone. The second project is a pipelet. So our students decided they wanted to do a parklet. They wanted to build it out of pipes. So they bought these pipes. We bought a bender. They bent each individual pipe into those uh, shapes. And now that parklet lives outside of John O'Connell High School. Um, the next program I wanted to highlight is our music production program, which actually meets here on campus, Mondays and Wednesdays. And that is done, it's a kind of a collaboration between our filmmaking and our music production. They do podcasting, recording, they score the films that our students do, they make beats, um, and then they do DJing. So, they have kind of done a little bit of everything. Anything um, that involves recording, music, um, as well as speaking, audio, anything sound. And we also do a percussion program during our summer where they engage with artists from SF Jazz who come from all over Latin America and they learn different styles of per percussion as well. And then our dance team, which meets Tuesdays and Thursdays at Leadership High School, which is just up the block. Um, that is kind of a collaborative, all levels, all ages kind of style. Like they learn a lot of different styles and then they come together to create the choreography. Those are just three of our programs. If you have any questions about uh, Youth Art Exchange or you're interested in joining, we have a really simple application, it's one page. And on the back, it'll give you all the information about the classes. We start next week, Wednesday. Our orientation is going to happen right there in your cafeteria. And then programming will start the following Monday. I'm right upstairs. I will also be around at lunch if you have any more questions. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Now we have Ms. Wiley talking about MLK. Good morning. Um, happy Tuesday. I just wanted to give you, this is a very sort of short offering, I just wanted to give the community some context. We have a guest speaker uh, assembly next Monday, um, and I just wanted to give you a heads up of who's going to be visiting with us that day. So um, he's been here a few times before. Um, some of you seniors maybe have heard him speak, I'm not positive. His name's Sam Mahara, um, and he's an alum, a class of 51 from Lake Wilmerding. Um, before attending Lake Wilmerding, he was um, removed from his home and interned during the a time of Japanese internment. Um, he and his family were sent all the way from San Francisco to Wyoming, and he was interned when he was nine years old. Um, he went on to major in engineering and was a rocket scientist for most of his life and he only started speaking about his experiences being interned once he retired. Um, he's going to come, part of what he talks about is his own experience, but the actual thread of his talk um, is using his experience to look a little bit at what um, is potential or, or what is happening currently with regards to civil rights um, and, and access. Um, in particular, he'll um, connect some of his own experience and his own talk to looking at um, current detainment centers for Latino immigrants, um, looking at um, the potential of detention of Muslim Americans, and really kind of connecting this question of um, can, can, is it possible yet again to have a repeat of what he went through, which is this identifying of an other, um, and then actually taking steps to, to detain or quarantine or separate that other. Um, so the talk's going to actually be in the theater. Um, Sam kind of prefers, I think, a little bit more sort of, a, of an intimate setting. Um, it's scheduled from 11 to 12 on um, next Monday. So I just wanted to give you a heads up of who's going to be coming. Um, Sam um, loves coming back to the school. Um, he speaks at schools in front of government officials um, all around the country throughout the year. 
but for him, he says it's particularly special to come back to Lick. He was one of, um, he believes, three other students in the 1950s who were also interned. Uh, but he said they never talked about it to each other while they were here at Lick. So anyway, just heads up, we're in the theater next Monday. Um, you know, be your open and gracious selves, um, and I think you will find this talk um, connected um, to some of the things you think about every day. Okay, thank you all. All right, thank you, Ms. Wiley. So we'd like to call up Ryan and Silvana. They have an announcement. And if anyone else has an announcement, now is the time to line up after them. And for cutoffs today, we have our very own Alex Martinez, Andrew Bogosian, and Sarah Dean saying wow like Owen Wilson. <laughs> Hi guys, so we wanted to let you know that there has been a schedule change to this week. So instead of class meetings on Thursday and Friday, we're going to be having an all-school pep rally for Oracle on Friday. Shirts, how you can get on buses, so it's very important that everybody is there so you can figure out how to uh, get to Oracle, and then we're also going to be going over cheers with the spirit. Hey guys, as you probably know, formal is coming up. We're going to have a promo for you in the next couple of weeks, but here's just some fast details. I'm so excited. It's in three Saturdays, February 10th. We're back at the SF Design Center, which is such a great big space. Um, it's from 8 to 11 p.m. The theme this year is Night Under the Stars, so start planning your outlets. Also, start planning some asks and stay posted on the E Tiger Facebook group and Instagram page for announcements. We're going to have ways to win free tickets. This year, we are having online ticket sales. We will be selling tickets the week of February 5th, so get ready and get hyped. Hi everyone, I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm Andrew. We're your student inclusion chairs. Um, we're letting you know that next Tuesday, a week from today on the 30th at lunch um, in room 8, we're going to be having our second and um, the topic is going to be money. So we kind of want to get people's input and thoughts about how socioeconomic status has been um, impactful their experience of Lick. Again, it's going to be really chill, and there will be pizza or another really good food. So come out. We'll wow. get more announcements out. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, boys, varsity basketball um, on Friday against the University at 4. Come out if you can make it. Um, and another ice cream that I like is vanilla, and I'll share with uh, Sophie and Sophia. So, yeah. All right, what up, what up? It's the BSU President Vic. Hi, I'm Social Supervisor Chloe. Um, so uh, we'll be having an event called Starry Night, where anyone can share their talents, being a singer or a poet or a writer. You have the opportunity to hold the mic and own the night. This event is on February 14th in the cafeteria from 5 p.m. to 11, uh, 7 p.m. Your writing doesn't have to be a love about love wow. or romance, even though it's on Valentine's wow. Day. So check us out. Peace. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, Ted the Lumberjack, how's your work going? Oh, it's not going very good. My chainsaw broke. Ah, oh, what are you using to cut your trees? One axe. Uh, just a reminder while people are talking, try to stay quiet so we can hear their announcements. Thank you. Um, I'm Emily. I'm Lauren. I'm 
I'm Natalie. Um, and we're three out of the four senior captains on the basketball team with Mika. Uh, and we have a game. We, have, we play after the boys on Friday at university at 5.30. So please come out. It'll be a good warm-up for your Oracle cheers. And they'll probably have a big crowd since it's a home game. So please come out. Separate announcement. Yeah, separate announcement. Um, yeah, sorry. Okay, so um, we are three of the seniors on the lacrosse team this season. We're super excited for girls' lacs. We'll be starting our preseason soon, uh, and we have a meeting at lunch tomorrow in room four. For, or sorry, room three. Um, all skill levels and experiences are welcomed. Our, also, our new coach will be there. She is supposed to be awesome. Wow. So, wow. I'm doing all the talking. Anyway, wow. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to have to make announcements shorter, just so you know. Hi, I'm Jeannie. I'm one of the leaders of Lee Club, and we're going to be having a big Wow, wow, wow. 